Oh my god, these bangs might actually be the death of me. It might. <laughs> It'll be fine. <laughs> Everything's gonna be fine. Because it's the end of the year. Okay. Hey, what's up? Can you believe it's the end of the year? It's quite literally December. It's the last month of 2023. And I swear, I swear, 2023 just started. I don't know, maybe, maybe we're like in May, in my opinion. Mentally, I think I'm in May, but we're not. The weather's changed. The Christmas tree has been brought up. I have bangs and my hair's darker. Wow. I mean, we, <laughs> I don't know. The bangs, I hope you like them because I feel like I'm gonna hate looking at them in this video while I edit. So as long as you like them, I'll deal with that. Uh, so hi, welcome to the video. We're just gonna talk about the books that I wanna read for the end of the year. I had lofty plans, honestly, for this year. Looking back on what I did last year, I really thought a whole lot of myself and then I lost my vlogging camera and I feel like that was the, at least one of the reasons why I didn't do as much as I thought that I would do this year, but it's fine. I've had a great year. We'll talk about that later, I guess, but I just have a few books that I wanted to read by the end of this year or books that I think that I'm going to be getting to by the end of this year. I believe that you will enjoy this and that's why I'm filming. Sure, yeah, that, <laughs> I don't know. I feel like I haven't done, <gasps> I haven't done a sit down video in a while, so I'm feeling a little weird. But before we jump into the juicy books that I want to read before 2023 is over, I want to say a big old thank you to Book of the Month for sponsoring this video. I love working with Book of the Month. I feel like I say that every time, but I really actually mean it. I mean, even when I'm not taking my sponsorships with Book of the Month, I have an actual subscription to their service and use it all the time, which I think says enough about how I actually feel about the brand. But just in case you are new here and you don't know anything about Book of the Month or you want to know more, Book of the Month is an incredible book subscription service that has a mission to help readers discover new books that they're going to love and also to promote emerging authors while doing so. And I feel like they do a really good job of that all the time. They've got their process down to find the best book picks for that month. They have their editorial team read through hundreds of new titles that are going to be releasing that month, and then they choose from those some of the absolute best ones so that their readers can then choose from this beautifully curated selection of books and hopefully discover something that they're going to adore. And they do so at honestly, one of the best prices for hardcover new release fiction books. They're way cheaper than other options, their shipping's always free, and they have a really good loyalty program with rewards, and the longer you stay a member, the lower the prices might be. It's just, it's just jam-packed of fun stuff. And not to mention that not only do they now offer their regular hardcover fiction book that you can get every single month as their subscriber, but you can also choose from audiobooks of these titles every single month month. So instead of getting the hardcover version of a book, if you are an audiobook lover and listener, you can instead choose to listen to it on that platform through their app. And it's a really great option for those of us who like to listen to audiobooks on drives to work and find that is really the only time for reading sometimes, you know? So out of their selection for the books this month, I chose two, which I'm very excited about both of them. The first one, wait, they always include a bookmark in the box and look at this one. That's for my spicy readers out there, honestly. But the first one that I chose was The Kingdom of Sweets by Erica Johansson. This popped out to me. I was definitely in the mood for some sort of holiday vibey story in general. So when I saw that this was one of their selections and I read the premise, I fell in love. This was exactly what I wanted for this month. So it is like a retelling of The Nutcracker, which I mean, don't get me wrong. I've, I've seen the ballet, but Barbie and the Nutcracker? Classic. Absolute classic, in my opinion. This reimagining specifically has to deal with two twin sisters who are split apart by envy and magic. One is light, one is dark and they've been cursed this way by their uncle and their whole uh, town has been cursed as well until they have to one day actually face each other on a Christmas Eve and that is where this story takes place. This seems like a very dark kind of magical fantasy retelling. It, it adds all of the things that I absolutely love to read about into a story that I already really enjoy and I think I'm going to love this. The other book that I chose for this month because uh, I always basically choose a thriller is 
No One Can Know by Kate Alice Marshall. So this was actually an early release title of theirs, and I mean, the tagline for this is three sisters, two murders, and too many secrets to count, and it has to do with a married couple that moves into a house with a very bloody past, and I'm assuming they're trying to figure out the mystery. You know, something along those lines. I always go for their thrillers. I feel like they're great thr thrillers every single time, but I'm very pleased with my two picks for this month. So also, if you wanted to check them out, granted they always have a great price for their books, but if you are a new subscriber for the month of December, you can actually pick up your first book for only $5 with the code SWEATER. So this is an amazing time to try it out or maybe to buy it for a reader in your life that you don't know what to get for Christmas. I don't know. I would really enjoy this as a present, so I think that that's a good idea. And thank you again to Book the Month for sponsoring this video, and now let us get into the nitty-gritty of what I want to read this month. And let's start, actually very simply, with... <laughs> <laughs> the Kingdom of Sweets. I really, really want to read this this month. I, in general, I don't have a lot of like holiday or Christmassy kind of stories in my shelves that I could pop out for this kind of occasion, but this is exactly what I want. I'm very much in a fantasy mood. I'm very much in like a magic, dark magic mood, and I feel like mixing that in with the Nutcracker is exactly the right vibe. So hopefully I get to this this month, maybe like right before Christmas. The week before Christmas, this will probably be what I want to read. Now, the rest are not Christmassy. Kind of. Okay, wait, I'll show you the other one that I thought gave me Christmas vibes, but isn't really Christmas vibes. But I was like, you know what? I wanted to read this this year and I didn't read it. And it has a Christmassy kind of feel, maybe just aesthetically. That is How the King of Elfheim Learned to Hate Stories by Holly Black. I definitely wanted to read this before I pick up The Stolen Air, which came out earlier this year. I never read this. It's like a short story. It's it's cute. It has pictures in it. Uh, I, don't, I don't know why I feel like this is like a Christmassy read. I really don't think it is. I think that the original cover has like Holly on it because Holly tends to appear in this story a lot and because of that I'm I'm like oh Christmas yeah great and it's like it has pictures I don't know I don't know I can't really explain it <sighs> let's get the big boy out of the way let's get the one that honestly I've been meaning to read since the moment it appeared on my doorstep a month ago and I haven't Iron Flame Iron Flame by Rebecca Yaros, the second book in the Fourth Wing series. I loved Fourth Wing. I read it earlier this year. I made a video on it. I'm kind of debating doing a video for this one. Let me know if you would like to see that, but I'm very excited about this. I absolutely loved, loved Fourth Wing, so I'm very excited to see what comes next. I don't know why. I have, oh, I know why I haven't picked it up, because it seemed like intimidating. I knew I was going to really like it. I know I'm going to have to wait a while for the next book, and also I didn't know if I wanted to film content for it, and if I do want to film content for it, that always gets just like a little bit more stressful. You know what I mean? But if you want to see it, let me know. I'm definitely down. I'm reading this. Before the end of the year, I'm reading this because I'm pretty sure I've already managed to spoil something for myself in this book because of TikTok. I'm really good about spoilers on TikTok, but they said it was a fourth wing spoiler. And that was not something that happened in fourth wing, which makes me think that they just said fourth wing because that's the first book. Okay. I'm gonna get off my soapbox, but you know what I mean. I might have gotten spoiled already. I need to read this before I get spoiled again. If you didn't know, Fourth Wing is just a story about dragon riders, and um, maybe it gets a little bit spicy. Maybe it's a little bit brutal. Who knows? I don't know. I'm, d I'm just a girl. I just read sometimes. So the next thing that I really wanted to get to this year is Love Theoretically by Ali Hazelwood. I feel like I've, even though I've been in a fantasy mood, I have been in the mood to read like one singular cutesy romance. I've been watching a lot of like rom-coms and I feel like I just want at least one book that fits that vibe. And Love Theoretically definitely fits that vibe in my opinion. I loved The Love Hypothesis, and I really want to see if, like, all of Allie Hazelwood's work is going to be for me. I feel like it will be, but we'll find out once I read this. Um, this one has to do with a theoretical physicist. Ooh. A theoretical physicist who makes up for her non-existent paychecks by offering her services as a fake girlfriend. Love that for her, because she's a great people pleaser. Wow. Love that. And she actually does a really good job, but it obviously comes crashing to the ground because Jack Smith, that annoyingly attractive and arrogant older brother of her favorite client, turns out to be a cold-hearted <laughs> experimental physicist who ruined her mentor's career. And he's the same one who rules over her department at MIT and is standing between her and her dream job. Interesting. Why does it fall apart? I guess we'll find out. And then I have two more books on this list. One which I actually started but stopped because I loved it so much 
while reading it on my Kindle that I wanted to be able to mark it up and like have a physical copy of it. So I need to get back into it because I didn't stop because I hated it. I stopped because I wanted it and then I got it and then I didn't read it. So <laughs> that's Divine Rivals by Rebecca Ross. Like I said, I started this on my Kindle a couple months ago while I was in Argentina and was absolutely in love with it. It's, it's just kind of fun, whimsical, not whimsical. How do I describe this? It's, it's this really interesting world where there's like leftover magic in certain places and magic kind of like reigns on its own from gods that used to walk the earth that now seem to have popped back up again. That's besides the point. But the main story is like this journalist who always wanted to be a journalist and her like number one rival in her journalism company basically is potentially her love interest. I don't know. I, I don't know. I don't know how to describe it. There's like this really cute wardrobe that like accidentally sends out letters and connects people and a typewriter and front lines because actually this does have to do with a war. Like <laughs> I just haven't really gotten to that part yet. So I'm still thinking about it in like cute little like flowery terms, even though it's not flowery, it's very dark already. There's been things that have happened and I'm only like 20% of the way through. So, wow, that was a, that wasn't a great description. I will leave all of these books linked down below because if you need a better description than like my general vibe and feeling on a book and you want like an actual summary, you're gonna need to look at those and I, I'll be kind enough to give them to you, you know? Anyways, the last book on my list, or no, there's a few books that I just don't own that are on my list. So before I get to my last physical book, let's talk about that. So I also really want to read, potentially, this one on my Kindle, One Dark Window. Something about it has been like calling out to me. I don't know anything about it. I probably could have left that out of this video, but I feel like maybe I might end up reading it. And because of that, I'm giving it to you. So the other thing that I want to read is Crescent City, House of Earth and Blood by Sarah J Maas. I've been getting like, a random urge to pick this up recently and I know that the third book is coming out January so I feel like this is a great time to reread House of Earth and Blood. I really loved the first book. The second book's good but I loved the first book so I don't know if I'll move on to the second book once I finish this one. That totally depends. I haven't done, I believe, like a full reread of House of Earth and Blood at all so I think that this will be really fun. Plus if I have the urge to reread something and I try to stop myself from doing it, it just ends up making all the other books that I try to read instead taste bad, you know? So might as well just put this in it because I've, I've been getting the urge. There's always a random urge to reread Sarah J Maas, you know? So yeah, that's my, that's my little stack. It's actually a pretty decent stack and one that I think that I'd be able to get through, which is even more exciting. Like look at that. Honestly think that I might be able to get through all of them. So I guess we'll find out. Can you believe it's the end of the year? I really can't. Let me know if you had lofty reading goals that you didn't achieve or did achieve. And I hope you enjoyed this video. I don't really think that there's any sort of holiday content that I was planning. I wasn't going to do vlogmas or anything like that. But if there is something that you would like to see from me, seeing how I haven't filmed in a million years, let me know down below because I am really trying to get back into it. I feel like I've missed you guys and I need to just put my big girl pants on and get back to it, whether it's easy or not. So what a hopeful message to leave at the very end of my video. I know. I hope you're having a great day and I will get to reading. Oh yeah. Thanks again, Book of the Month, for sponsoring this video. Check them out. Um, I'll leave all the information down below. Love you. Bye.